My name's John Hamilton. Yep. We have a megaphone. My name's John Hamilton, and I'm glad to see you here to support this. Glad to see you here to support my election campaign to become the next mayor of Lewisham, my new home. Yay! And uh, I expect most of you have read my campaign manifesto, have seen my literature. And victory to you, pray. We seem to have some interlopers. They want to say victory oh, oh, to Ukraine. Okay. So um, the first speaker I'm going to invite to come up is Lubna Zaitan. Zaitan, sorry, I'm so sorry, I got it wrong. Um, who's a Palestinian uh, living in this country, and she is and she is going to take the microphone, the megaphone. Thank you. Hello? Am I loud enough? First of all, thank you all so much for your solidarity and standing here with us. It's a very sad time for every Palestinian and every human in this world with a heart. All the events that we've seen have done nothing but break every ounce of any hope I had, especially in the Labour government, who I voted for for my whole life. And to see them supporting and being complicit in a genocide against my people, never again. We said never again, and that didn't say we're not going to include the Palestinians. This means now for everyone. And as long as justice prevails, injustice prevails, in Palestine, this will prevail everywhere. No one's going to be safe as long as this happens now. And I stand here, I have my Palestinian father, who endured the horrors of occupation long before now. As we all know, and those of us who know our history, this started long before the 7th of October. Over 75 years of illegal occupation, of brutality, of arrest, of living in an open-air concentration camp, being starved, of, of everything from education, food, the electricity, power, and their rights. And we deemed as human animals, we human animals, we didn't commit a genocide. If we human animals, what I ask is Israel and UK in their complicity and America and all of those that support a genocide. It's just, it's, it's a disgrace. I can't believe I have to stand here and address this. I'm an artist, I'm usually a creature of solitude, I paint. The only thing I've been able to paint is stop the genocide banners and asking the world to boycott an apartheid. It's devastating to see the scenes, the horrifying scenes coming out of Palestine, our family members. You know, my father's cousin, the last words from his mouth were screams as he was crushed to death by an Israeli tank. And this was before the seven. My dad was brutalized under their occupation. He had to flee, he was in prison, he had to take up arms and defend his right to exist from the age of 16. Where is his childhood? There is no childhood there. He, le he taught me how to ride a bicycle and never himself learned because he was busy picking up body parts. He was busy trying to exist, trying to eat, trying to study. And he instilled in us all of these qualities, the respect, the love for life, and when governments are trying to divide us with their falsified propagandas and lies, let them know this is not anti-Semitism, to be anti-Zionist and anti-apartheid, to stand together for the right to exist and resist. We have every right, and the occupier cannot claim self-defense when they occupy us, when they brutalize us, when they kill our children. Have you seen the amputees? They, they're having to endure the horrific horrors of amputation with no anaesthetic. To be starved to death, have you seen the bones being pulled out from the rubble? And we're complicit. Shame on the government and their divisive propagandas and terms. They try to divide and split the people. It's not about Islam. It's not about Judaism. It's about humanity. This is about us standing together. We have Jewish friends and brothers who stand here with us against this. Against this. And we must continue to stand united against disparities in Palestine and everywhere. And we must use the power of our vote to elect a government that will not be complicit in this. We must use our voices and not be hushed, not be gagged, and exercise every right we have to exist 
and that is our resistance. Greenwich and I thank you all, and I hope you join us also at Greenwich Palestine Action. We've been challenging Greenwich Council, who wouldn't even hear us for a minute of silence that we requested. For our people, I'm sure you heard the cries of our family member Hint as she was trapped in the car while Israeli tanks were shooting her to death. And their burnt, charred bodies found at the end with the paramedics also who came to rescue her, obliterated. And another 25 members of our family killed in one single strike. This is a history that has to end and we have to stand on the right side of it. And thank you all for being here again. It's nice to see humanity exist with the people, even if not the government. Free, free! Free, free! Free, free! Thank you, Lubna, from uh, Greenwich, describing the tragedy that has affected her own family in Palestine. Can I just ask, Bob, Gill, are you in the audience? Bob's got to come from a meeting in Ilford, so he's probably going to be a bit late. Um, so, Jacob is here, on the right next to me. I'm going to ask Jacob Weiss to speak for a few minutes, please. Free Palestine! Free Palestine! Brothers and sisters, friends, we are, ha we are happy today to come and support justice. Supporting justice means supporting our friend George and his party with George John Hamilton as mayor. True, this is true peace, true justice. People who stand up for truth and justice will not, be, will not take orders from above. People who not, do not take orders from government people who support genocide in Palestine. These people we have to support, and we do support, we always support. I'm not, we are, I don't have to necessarily be a right or left politician, I don't know. But one thing I do know, we don't have politicians like George and John who stand up for justice and truth, yeah. for peace. Yeah. This is why we are here today, to stand up for justice and peace. This is not a Jewish or religious issue at all. This humanitarian issue what's happening in Palestine. With the media try to blame religion on it, but we stand to religion to blame, uh, uh, make it as, a, as if it's a religious conflict. We just, to, 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 to shout, to, to chant from the river to the sea. This is not a hate, this is a, a peace march. This has nothing to do with hate, this has nothing to do with Extremism, and this is just a, a, a chance for peace. If we all live together in Palestine like they always did before this curse, this misfortune of Zionism came along yes. to us Jews and to the Palestinians alike. This is, we want to support openly our messages to all the politicians to the right, to the Labour and Conservative. You're not doing any favor that by, by silencing all these protests and all these, all these marches for Palestine, you're not doing any favor of the Jewish community. I can tell, I can tell Rishi Sunak that the majority, the silent majority of the Jewish people are really embarrassed, deeply and very upset about it, and wish for, this, for, the, for the world leaders to put an end to this bloodshed. And what are they doing? They're just currently supporting this genocide on a daily basis. Why are we talking this Palestinian children being killed? And they're talking about other things, which, which, which they, they, and they continue supporting it. We pray, and go, we pray for the success, and we wish you success for John Hamilton as mayor for this, uh, this area. And we will win, peace will win, and God's on our side. Thank you. Thank you very much. Jackie, are you, are you nearby? Jackie? Jackie! Jackie and Tom. Okay. Come on, George. Come on, George. George Hamilton! Right, just while we're waiting for Jackie and 
Bob Gill could Bob George is happy to wait till the end, I think, are you? Yeah. Oh, here's Jackie. Jackie. Hello, Jackie. Jackie. Hey. I don't know if she'll go with you. <laughs> Love you, John. Where's that? Should I press it? Yeah. Victory to you, Craig. Victory to you, Craig. Don't let the baby go. House. Right, Bob is quite close, but I'm then going to speak on my own behalf until Bob can get here. So my name's John Hamilton, as some of you know, and I don't know, oh, it's Gwenton, hi Gwenton. Um, I thought you were a heckler. Right, one of my best fans. Gwenton Slowly, who has done more for knife crime in this borough and in South East London than anybody else. So, my name's John Hamilton. I only recently joined the Workers' Party, but I'm not new to Lewisham politics, as most of you know. I have slept a week on this lawn in a little house that we built to shame the Labour Council about their housing policy. You can see the video of it on my website, johnhamilton.org.uk. We slept here in January in a little house made of estate agent poles and placards. It was cold, it was noisy. Police cars going up and down in the middle of the night with their sirens on sometimes. But the mayor, see Bullock at the time, was um, to kind of avoid the criticism, he said not only would he have built 250 council houses, he would up it to 500. But of course, he didn't build more than about a dozen. Um, the problems in this borough are mainly caused, I think, by the executive mayoral system. Obviously, there's other contributing factors, but the mayor has all the power. The councillors have none. Right from the time that first was brought in, I planned to change that. In 2006, I started a campaign to get rid of that. The government changed the law and said you have to have 10 years between referenda. So I'm hoping that if I win as mayor, this election on Thursday, 
then it's easy. I can just call a referendum. But if I don't win, and there is a slight possibility, gentlemen and ladies, uh, then I hope you will all join me in becoming campaigners to abolish the mayoral system. Yeah. To do that, we need 10,000 signatures collected within a 12-month period. But I don't want to wait 12 months. I want them done by next Christmas. Because if we can get the, the signatures by Christmas, 10,000 voters from the vote electoral roll, then there will be a referendum next May in 2025 when we can abolish the mayoral system. So I'm hoping that this will be the last mayoral election I contest. Um, and uh, that will be really good. It only takes 100 people to get 100 signatures and we can do it. Go to my website and look at the Bring Back Democracy page or go to Facebook, Facebook and look at Bring Back Democracy. That will explain how to do it. Now, to win the election on Thursday, it may, it may not be possible. When I've been giving out these leaflets, this is the latest one with George's picture on with me, uh, which only came out this morning, uh, because we didn't know about the Rochdale win until Friday, of course. I want you, if you support me, I'd like you to take a handful of leaflets from the Workers' Party stall there as you leave and deliver them in your street, please. A finger full, a centimetre, is about 80 leaflets. If you've got a long street, please take two centimetres. We can do it together. That doesn't mean I will necessarily win. And if you've got the time to talk to your neighbours or to give them to people in their hands explaining why you're supporting me, then that's even more valuable than just putting it through a letterbox where it might get mixed up with pizza recipes. Oh, really? Sorry. Thank you, sorry. You're absolutely right, Paul. Thank you. So um, that was about um, helping my campaign by leafleting. We also have posters here, and uh, you're welcome to take posters for your windows or ask your local shops if they will put them in the window. Some people think it's a bit provocative. It says, don't vote Labour or Tory, don't vote for genocide. But to me, it makes sense. If you vote Labour or Tory, you're supporting the genocide that's going on, which they are not uh, speaking out against. So I also just want to come to an issue which has troubled me a little bit recently. I'm in some WhatsApp chats uh, about Palestine here in Lewisham. And, you know, I've never, never met George until today, uh, but I know like, it came up actually. I, apparently I wrote a tweet, uh, a Facebook post in support of him, which was quoted back to me by a reporter this morning in an, in an email accusing me of anti-Semitism. But um, what I just wanted to say was, George and I may agree on many things, but I'm also sure there's lots of things we don't agree with. But that doesn't mean I don't want to vote for the same party that he's in. And really, these purists who say, oh, I can't vote for Arthur Scargill because of this, or I can't vote for Jeremy Corbyn because of this, or I can't vote for John Hamilton because he once invited a right-wing speaker to a hustings. You know, it's bollocks. We all have to work together if we want to defeat the ruling class. And I... I'm not saying necessarily all join the Workers' Party. It's the one I chose to join. But I do wish that we could all come together and at least the minimum is not fight against each other in elections. And the maximum would be to form a united front in general elections whereby we can perhaps make an impact on parliamentary democracy. I'm probably, I probably shouldn't say this, but I'm not a great fan of parliamentary democracy really bringing about the changes I want. But at least we can try that, can't we? And when we've tried it, maybe it will work, as in Chile, or maybe it won't, as in Chile. So <laughs> I'd like to finish there by just hoping that you're not getting too cold. We will have Bob Gill on very soon, I hope. Uh, he's an excellent campaigner. He's a member of the Workers' Party. And actually, it was when I saw an interview with Bob saying that he joined the Workers' Party that I decided I would join as well. Because I know Bob from the Save Lewisham Hospital campaign. He's an excellent GP in Sidcup. He carried on seeing patients during COVID, which some didn't. And he's also been at the forefront of preventing privatisation of the NHS. Hands up if you've seen his film, The Great NHS Heist. It's very good and should be recommended and we can try and arrange more viewings of it in this area, I'm sure. Thank you very much. Bob, are you in the room, as it were? He's still parking.
George is happy to speak now. Thank you very much, everybody. A big hand for George Galloway, the new MP for Rochdale. Thank you very much, John, mayoral candidate. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for gathering in these numbers in this cold night. Uh, but it is important that you did so. I, too, am not a stranger to this area. Some of my grandchildren were born in the hospital here. Some of my children and grandchildren live in this borough. And so it was with great happiness uh, that I agreed to come here from Parliament this evening to support John Hamilton for mayor. For mayor, because of the reasons adumbrated so ably by others, including John himself. Of course, elections are not the be-all and end-all. Winning elections is not the be-all and end-all. What is our duty is to stand up for what's right on any platform, in any forum, in any election that we possibly can. And ultimately, as the rabbi said, we will prevail. Peace will prevail. Justice will prevail. If not in our time, then in the time of our children and their children. And we have a duty. If you're a religious believer, we have a judgment day at which we'll be asked what we did for justice, what we did for freedom. And this is the latest campaign that we are in. We had an historic victory in Rochdale last Thursday night. And I believe, I believe that politics has changed as a result, not just of my victory, but of the government's panicked response to it. When uh, little Napoleon, Rishi Sunak, with his uh, elevator heels, climbed on that hastily erected podium at the state's expense to make an attack on democracy and to make an attack on my constituents, he showed the state of panic that now exists. And I can tell you, having just left, Westminster in the last hour and a bit, that everywhere there is a shiver running along the benches in the House of Commons, looking for a spine, looking for a spine to run up and failing so far to find one. They are in a state of panic because what happened in Rochdale was not just a victory for the Workers' Party, but a defeat for the two establishment parties of the state. Both of the cheeks of the same backside got a kicking, got a spanking, in the same evening, in the same hall, in the same town of Rochdale. Not only did they fail to win, they failed to come second. They only just came third. And the Labour Party came fifth. Or is it sixth? <laughs> this is unprecedented. Never in the history of British politics have Labour and the Conservatives in the same election scored such a disastrous failure. And suddenly they know that people despise them. The Sky News interviewer that appeared aghast that I might not respect the Prime Minister <laughs> didn't appear to know that millions of us despise the Prime Minister. We despise the Prime Minister. And we despise his opposite number, if anything, even more. Even more. Because I always
always say that the TV never run this. If there's any TV here, I promise you they won't run it. As Malcolm X said, the wolf, when it comes towards you, you're in no doubt about its intentions. But the fox appears to be smiling, although its intentions are precisely the same. We genuinely believe that the Conservatives and the Labour Party are disastrous for our people, disastrous for our country, not just on war and peace, to which I shall now turn, but on the living standards of our own people here at home. They really are two cheeks of the same arse. They follow the same economic policy. They have the same attitude to wealth and power in our own country. There is no lesser of two evils in this picture. I never believed in that approach to politics anyway, because evil always wins if you vote for the lesser of two evils. But now, no one can seriously maintain that Keir Starmer is the lesser of two evils. I could make a good case that Keir Starmer is even more evil than Rishi Sunak and the Conservative Party that he's supposed to be opposing. And here in local government, the same is exactly true. Who can say that Sadiq Khan is better than Boris Johnson? They were both bloody awful mayors of London for the ordinary people of this great metropolis. Who can say that Labour in Lewisham is better than the Conservatives, will build more homes than the Conservatives, will treat the working class in this borough better than the Conservatives? Somebody shouted me, but he would have a very difficult job of showing me the reasons why anyone should vote Labour on Thursday in this by election. And I turn, I turn to the elephant in the room, which a surprising number of people in politics imagine is something we can overlook, is something we can ignore, that will not affect the way we vote. You said it was controversial, John, your poster, but if you vote Tory or Labour, you are voting for genocide. You are voting for the slaughter of Palestinian children and their mothers, their fathers, their brothers and sisters. That is a demonstrable fact. There is no difference at all between these two parties towards the slaughter occurring in Gaza. And I often ask myself the question, how is it possible that our hearts are broken every time we open our telephone and look at social media, look at the pictures and the videos? How is it that our hearts are broken while their hearts are so hard, so calloused as to be scarcely human anymore? How is that possible? that you can see a child with no legs hanging on a hook? How is it possible that, as the young lady just talked about, the little girl, Hind, how is it possible to listen to the video of her saying her prayers, begging for mercy, begging to be saved, when the Israeli armed forces who call themselves the most moral army in the world, having already murdered her whole family. The little girl was in the car with all the dead bodies of her family, and then they killed her as well. How is it possible to support that? How is it possible not to be moved by that? And yet our leaders appear entirely unmoved. Maybe they don't look at the pictures. Maybe they don't look at the videos. But they seem oblivious to the fact 
the tens, scores of millions of people in this country can't take their eyes off the slaughter. They're completely broken hearted about what's happening. And our politicians say when people vote against genocide parties that we're extreme. What's extreme about being opposed to genocide? What's extreme about being opposed to the killing of children and women? I tell you this, it's our political class and the media that serve them. It's they who are the extremists, not us. We are the peace marchers. We are the peace protesters. So, I'm going to tell you bluntly, if you vote for Labour or Conservative on Thursday in Lewisham, you have voted for genocide. You have turned your face away from little Hind, from little Sidra hanging on the wall, minus her legs. You've got an opportunity. I mean, John Hamilton didn't drop in by parachute. He's been a fixture of politics in this borough for as long as I have been associated with it, which is more than 20 years. John Hamilton would be an admirable mayor. He'd be a mayor to be proud of. You'd be able to see him on the television and say, I'm proud that he is my mayor. We're not asking you just to vote for anybody. We're asking you to vote for someone who really is somebody. John Hamilton for mayor on Thursday. Get out and vote. Get your families out. Get your neighbors out. Get your friends out. Let's have a big vote for John Hamilton for mayor of Lewisham. Thank you very much indeed. I'm never so sorry, but Bob Gill is held up in traffic, and so I've, I've explained to him that we're going to close now. Um, I'd just like to remind you of a couple of words, and I think you'll know the one that follows. Free, free, Palestine! Free, free, Palestine! Free, free, Palestine! From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free! From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free! From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free! Thank you all. Please take literature, take posters, deliver them to people through their doors or talk to them. Maybe we can change Lewisham for good yeah. on Thursday. Thank you. Yeah.